Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, General Law Chapter 30A, Paragraph 18, and the Governor's March 15, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place, members of the public who wish to watch and listen to the meeting may do so in the following manner. WCTV, Channel 9 on your Comcast, Xfinity, Channel 37 on Verizon, Fios, and live stream WCTV.org. This meeting of the Wilmington Planning Board is being conducted via remote participation. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Members of the public who would like to listen to this meeting while in progress may also do so via telephone by dialing 1-646-558-8656 and enter meeting ID 869-0215-1277. Then press pound and press pound again at the next voice prompt. Members of the public attending this meeting virtually will be allowed to make comments if they wish to do so. Mm -hmm. During a portion of the hearing designated for public comment, by following the steps previously noted, then press star nine on their telephone keypad. This will notify the meeting host that the caller wishes to speak. All callers using this feature will be placed in a queue in the order they entered the prompt. In the event that despite our best efforts, we are not able to provide for real-time access, we will post a record of this meeting on the town's website as soon as we are able. Okay, you want to get going for the 7.30? Rondi's been trying to get in, she said, for 10 minutes. Hmm. Hmm. Well, she can keep trying. <laughs> What are we going to do? I mean, oh, um, you to... I think she's here now. Um, Ronnie, are you there? I'm gonna... She's video is not showing up, so. Well, we can either do, we can do the A&R plan. We can what? I'm sorry. I didn't hear. 30 or we can do the A&R plan. It's up to you. Let's do the um, 7.30. Okay. Great. So thank you um, for those um, who are maybe watching at home. Mary Gingrich, Director of Planning Accommodation. Um, the 7.30 is a hearing. To amend our stormwater regulations in town. The reason that we're amending those stormwater regulations, the M. We are by the front of. Oh, you're breaking up. Yeah. Is that better? No. Can you hear me now? There you go, much better. Okay. Um, so I was saying, let me change my location in the house and maybe Paul can give an overview of the, um, the proposed changes. Okay. 
Happy to do that. Thanks, Valerie and members of the board. Um, these changes are required by the EPA's NPDES MS4 permit. Um, they're changes to the regulation section of our stormwater management bylaw. Um, the biggest change is in Appendix E. It's under um, with a new section under Appendix E, which is additional water quality performance standards. So what this would require is that applicants that have projects that trip an SMP and exceed one acre of disturbance, they would have to provide water quality um, treatment for one inch of runoff over all their impervious services um, for a new development. Either that or provide 90 uh, BMP that provides 90% PSS delivery. Um, the second requirement is redevelopment projects are going to be required to provide a water quality that disturbs over one acre of land would need to provide a water quality volume or treatment for 0.8 inches of runoff over their impervious surfaces or 80% TSS removal. Um, that's the requirements, that's the changes, the, the biggest change in um, the regulation section. For most applicants, I'd say, it's particularly applicants that are filing an SMP um, for new development, they're not gonna see a change. We already, for the most part, require, or the state policy requires um, treatment for one inch of runoff over impervious services for, I'd say, the majority of applicants, um, depending on their land use and if they're in a zone two or if they have a site with rapid infiltration. Um, the biggest change is for redevelopment projects where that requirement is, um, it's not a requirement, it's only uh, applicants are just required to meet that to the maximum extent practical, where now they're going to be required to provide water quality volume for 0.8 inches of runoff um, over the impervious surfaces. So I can tell you firsthand from designing these systems um, and reviewing uh, consultants work in town. Um, I find it pretty hard pressed to find someone that can't cite a water quality BMP that provides that level of treatment anyhow, but um, I guess they technically always would have a fallback of the maximum extent practical clause in the policy, whereas now that would, uh, this would sort of trump that um, state policy. That's, um, that's the gist of it. Okay. Board members have any questions? Everybody's good? Val? Yeah, no. The track. I can kind of chime in um, here while Val's frozen. So there are um, some minor cleanup items throughout the document too. Um, but I, I don't think there are any like um, substantive changes. Um, we did track changes throughout the document. So if you read through it, you can see some, you'll see some red lines here or there, but really the significant change is that in appendix E under uh, additional water quality. Okay. Is there anyone from the public that has a question? Can we tell Val? Uh, oh, there's nobody do. waiting. There's nobody. We, do? we we don't have anyone with a hand raised. Okay. Uh, yeah. We could we could wait a couple, you know, wait a, a few seconds. There is a little bit of a delay on the TV. Um, am okay. I coming? Am I coming in better now? Okay. Yes, you are. Okay, good. My internet connection is unstable. There's nothing to vote on here, right? This was just a discussion. Um, no, there is. Um, so it was a public hearing. So it would be closing the public hearing and um, oh, okay. and yes, and voting on the regulation changes. Okay. I should mention too, the EPA gave us to July 1st, um, 2020 to make our bylaw. 
in regulation. So we're right up against it. All right. No pressure. Okay, so I'll take a motion to accept the recommendations as presented. And and close the public hearing. And close the public hearing. I'm just gonna do that separate, but we could do it together. Okay. So moved. All right. <laughs> Second. Okay. Terry, how do you vote? Yes. John, how do you vote? Yes. Angela, how do you vote? Yes. Randy, how do you vote? She, she there? She doesn't have any audio connected. Okay. <clears throat> Chairman votes in favor. Thank you. We'll take it as uh, four in favor and one, uh, one abstained. Oh. Good? That's there you go. You're back. Talking. <laughs> Yeah. Was Friday. that a <laughs> Rondi was was that a yes from you? Three times I've said yes. Four times I've been. Oh, there you go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Good. All right. So we're on set. <laughs> Okay. Great. Thank you. Good. Thank you very much. All right. So good night. We're gonna move on to the seven forty. Yes. Okay, so seven forty, we have a continued public hearing, site plan review twenty dash oh two, stormwater management permit twenty dash oh two for three thirty Balladville Street. Map three, parcel twenty nine. And Mr. Chairman, they submitted a request to continue to the um, to the July meeting. Um, we have a time slot at 740 again, if you'd like to put them at that time slot. Which day is the meeting? July what? July 7th. It is the 7th. Okay. Okay, take a motion to continue to July 7th at 7.40. All right, so move. Second. Do, do they also need an extension for their time to the no. end of the month or? No, we're good on no? that. Cheryl? Okay, good. Okay. So, Sean? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Terry? Yes. Randy. <laughs> Angela. Yes. <laughs> Chairman says yes. Randy's raising a hand, I could tell. <laughs> tell her to text in to Cheryl if we can't get a vote. I don't I don't think we'll need her vote tonight. Um not that we won't miss it, yeah. but um. <laughs> I got you. It's terrible. Yeah. Rondi, have you tried to move your? Have you tried to move locations? Hey, uh, hey, we got two minutes. You wanna, you wanna, you wanna do the form A? We got two minutes before the next one. By my watch, anyway. Sure. Let me, um, let me pull it up on the screen.
Okay, so this a and R is um, a kind of a swap of a, a little non-buildable parcel, um, 616 square feet, um, going from, let's see, so parcel A, just uh, move this. All right, so it would be conveyed to 101 Middlesex Ave, which is um, this one. So it's going from this lot to this lot. Um, it, it doesn't impact either of those lots as far as, um, you know, complying to zoning. It does help their existing garage um, with a, a little bit more setback, but um, non-buildable like lot right here that conveyed from these people to these people. We had engineering review the, the A&R and um, it appears to be acceptable. Okay. Take a motion to accept the plan as submitted. Uh, so moved, Terry. Um, I'll second, Sean. Okay. Angela, how you vote? Yes. Sean, how you vote? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Terry? Yes. Randy? Chairman's in favor. Thank you. Okay, so we have a 750 public hearing, site plan review 20-04, stormwater management permit 20-04 for 100 Eames Street, map 38, parcels 4 and 4C. Is, is that you, Mr. Peterson? It is, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. How are you? Very good. How are you? Good. And I think Patrick, yes. Patrick McCarty and Jamie Garrity should be... In, although I don't see either one of them at the moment. Yes, I'm, I'm here. Oh. I'm, I'm here too. Oh, hi, Good Jamie. Evening. Hi, Pat. Hey, good. Hi. So, Mr. Chairman, if I may, since the last public hearing, uh, we did address uh, all of the concerns that were raised by Paul Aloni, the town engineer, uh, relative to this site. Uh, we did not get them in uh, with the requisite two week notice. Uh, so I, I don't believe you have any comments from Paul this evening based on our revised submittal. Uh, and we received on last Friday uh, the report from Green International Affiliates, who the town hired uh, to be the traffic consultant on the town side for this project. And we are in the process of preparing a response to that correspondence. Uh, and if, if we may, I would just like to have Jamie take a few minutes and outline uh, what we have done since the last public meeting, Mr. Jim. Sure. Uh, okay. Go ahead, Jim. Pat Patrick, do you want to take it or do you want me to go through the plans? Sure. No, I'm happy to do it. I'm going to try to share my screen and see how we do here. Okay, great. Sharing the screen is a little beyond me at the moment. Makes ah, how's that? Us. Everybody looking at the site plans? Hey, pretty good there, Patrick. Go ahead. All right. I'm off to a good start. So good evening for the record, Patrick McCarty, uh, McCarty Engineering, here with Attorney Peterson and Jamie McCarty, the applicant. We will ask before the board on May 5th to present the site plans. Since that time, we've done quite a bit of work. We received a comment um, letter from Valerie and also from Mr. Looney and Mr. Holt. So we put together a comment response letter dated May 18th, that's 14 pages long. So I won't um, certainly go through each and every line item, um, but we did we did pretty much agree to everything that was on the plans or made ad appropriate adjustments to the plans. And uh, also dated May 18th, we have the revised site plan documents that are in front of you on your screen. 
So this is just the cover sheet, nothing uh, too exciting there. This is the updated survey from Dana Perkins. One of the comments or um, issues was to have the wetland delineation peer reviewed. So myself, Scott Morrison from Echotech and the town's consultant LEC met on site and we walked uh, all of the area at the rear of the site where the wetlands are. We did end up adding uh, nine flags. We yeah. added two right here and we added seven, uh, sorry, six right here to connect the B series and the D series. And we added one flag adjustment over here. We, we hung those flags in the field. We had Dana Perkins go out and locate them and issue us an updated uh, existing conditions plan that we use uh, to pre prepare our revised drawings. This is the demolition plan, just to refresh everybody's memory, the existing two-story building that's U-shaped at the front of the street is being demolished. And the single story pre-engineered metal building, the mint green colored building at the rear of the lot is proposed to be demolished. Mr. Aluni was very helpful. He provided us with um, all the record drawings that the engineering department had on file for this site. So we were able to update all the water, sewer, gas locations to each of the buildings and label those sizes, which was one of his comments. We also updated our proposed erosion control barrier slash limit of work, which is this line here um, at the rear of the site. And then we have a graphical limit of work that follows the property line across the frontage this area of pavement that we're actually trimming back. If you notice, there's quite a bit of space for a drive aisle between the tips of these spaces and these spaces. So we're proposing to cut some of this out to reduce the amount of um, impervious area within the zone two. And then we come across and we basically follow the curb line here. So everything inside this shape is our project area. So that's the update to the demo plan. The layout and materials plan, the building proposed 44,000 square foot building essentially stayed the same. We did um, reduce the size of this front uh, overflow parking area. We made some comments uh, on the right hand side. We added a bunch of notes about snow storage and snow disposal and use of rock salt within the buffer zone. We added a zoning conformance table line item for the existing buildings. We did the parking summary update for uh, both the Allcote side of things and the Garrity Stone side of things. And we added um, impervious area table for impervious area within the groundwater protection district and where a net decrease of 3,300 square feet of impervious area. Grading and drainage, um, we made also some, some pretty substantial revisions to this plan to address Mr. Looney's comments. Starting at the front of the site, everything used to sheet flow here and follow the existing curb line to the back. Now we've added a catch basin to a small underground infiltration system here um, to help recharge some of the water and also to provide water quality. This is equipped with an isolator row. One of these rows is where it'll catch the sediment before it infiltrates in the remaining. This was a dry well at the proposed uh, dock height loading dock. It's now a catch basin with a deep sump and a hood that goes to another small infiltration basin. Is everybody seeing my mouse moving as I'm talking? Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. Yep. Um, <laughs> All this grading here has stayed the same. Grading here has stayed the same. We had a swale along the back of the building that uh, continued down and discharged into the wetlands. Now we have that as an ADS pipe header, a 12 inch pipe that picks up the downspouts, discharges at this flared end, and we have an at grade infiltration basin to treat all of the rooftop because this is a single slope roof that slopes from here to here and then down gutters. So that'll all be infiltrated and it has an emergency spillway here. Uh, out. And then at Mr. Looney's suggestion, before we had this rip, this um, 
piece stone diaphragm to catch the runoff from the parking lot that went to just a small um, depression here for stormwater. What we have now is still that piece stone diaphragm. We have a small uh, pool for settlement, and then we have a pocket wetland, which is a meandering channel here for the water to take its time meandering through and get uh, treated before it discharges to the wetlands. And that that pocket wetland was Mr. Mr. Looney's suggestion. So we're we're hopeful that he's happy with the changes made to the grading and drainage plan. Utility plan changes were pretty minor. Uh, we had the proposed water line coming to the building for the sprinkler service, and then just before it got to the building, we were tapping off for a domestic. And they asked us to come back to the to the main site. Uh, water line for both services. So we did that. As part of the regrading, we relocated the transformer, but pretty minor stuff relative to utility changes. Landscape uh, plan, we could see we have a lot more landscaping now proposed in this pocket wetland, um, all designed to the Mass DEP guidelines for a pocket wetland. So I'm hoping uh, town engineering is happy with this design. And then some plantings along the front kind of showroom area of the building and the landscape islands along the sides of the slopes for the entrance and exit driveway. And here, and all of this has been revised to take into account the, uh, the slopes because there is some grading down from the street into the site. And there's a small retaining wall here at its highest point right here. It's five feet tall, the rest of it's four feet tall. It connects to the abutters retaining wall that's right on the property line. Lighting plan. Um, if you notice the red note, uh, our lighting consultant didn't get back to us by last Tuesday and we wanted to get the meat of the plans up to the town. So um, they had them in advance of the meeting. So we put this note on and we did just deliver a revised plan yesterday and understand we fully understand that no one's had a chance to look at that but the concern with this lighting plan was the spillage of light over the property line. You could see that the foot candles read one, 1 1.2, two. So we had our lighting consultant revise this. So it's zeros at the lot line and also added some fixtures, wall pack fixtures on the existing buildings over here to brighten up this area, this area where it's at zeros. The detail sheets have been revised to address town comments. Um, on this sheet, we added a detail for a marker post that we're proposing at the 15 foot wetland um, no disturb area, just so future development is aware of that 15 foot no touch. That was another recommendation in the peer review. We've updated the retaining wall um, detail. I just noticed that I updated the detail itself to be steel, but I forgot to change the text. So that was one of the comments. We had timber guardrail proposed and Mr. Looney requested that we switch that to steel to match the other uh, guardrails on Eam Street, but uh, apparently I missed changing the word wood to steel. So obviously I'll catch that on the next round. Uh, this is a blow up detail of the pocket wetland that was added. And this is the erosion and sediment control plan, again, updated to reflect the design changes, but the text and the handling of the site remain the same. This is the town's ladder truck that the specs were provided to us. This plan demonstrates that the ladder truck can come into the site, come down the driveway, it can pull up to the front of the building. If necessary, it can back in front of the building and then come back out. It also shows that the fire truck can come down the main driveway, take a right after existing building 12 that will remain and be able to loop through this driveway and then back out and exit onto Eames Street. And again, these specifications are the town's exact ladder truck provided by Mr. Aloni. We updated the, um, the floor plan. Oh, One of the questions was the showroom and whether it was a retail component. So what we did is we added some 
detail to the showroom. So, so Garrity is a stone fabricator. So if you're redoing your kitchen, your bathroom, any kind of stone surface you want in your house, you'd be able to come in with your kitchen designer. There'd be some islands that are mocked up. There'll be some cabinets that are mocked up, different countertops, different um, sink selections. This is kind of the greeting counter. This would be a freestanding wall with the Garrity logo on it. On the back side would be a false fireplace with a stone surround. And again, just more cabinet countertop displays. And on the wall here and here would just be uh, floor to ceiling, shallow shelves that have different squares of all the different stone products that you could come in. And, and you know, I did this design with Jamie's input. It's certainly not an architectural plan meant to convey to the board that this isn't a retail type of uh, establishment where you'd come in and actually purchase something, you know, have a transaction and then leave. It's, it's more to come in and view all the different options for the stone. General office area, private offices and cubicles and bathrooms and a conference room, um, bathrooms and showers for the shop employees and break room for the shop employees. And then if I zoom back out, the delivery truck, so a 10 wheel flatbed um, truck would come loaded with slabs. It would back into the building and there's bridge cranes in mm -hmm. days that they would unload the stone and then store them on metal A-frames all throughout this area. And then they would be queued for a job and loaded through the doors here and here into the fabrication area where they're cut and shaped and polished and edge detailed everything to make your, your countertop. And then they're staged here. And then all these doors are the, the van height uh, loading doors where they would load the finished product onto the vans each morning to go out for installation on the jobs. We have one door here where you'd be able to drive out onto an elevated concrete platform with a open top dumpster on either side of it so that they could dispose of the stone fragments that um, our waste from the fabrication process. So that's the, over, the overview of the floor plan. Elevations still look the same as last time. And then one of the questions was the design was kind of, um, I don't want to say cut up, but it was, it, we were working around the buildings that remain. So as everyone knows, there's 17 existing buildings out here now that are all occupied by Alco, including this building that's being demolished and this being the building that's being demolished. Building number 12 houses the boilers that heat, provide heat for all the buildings. And so we can't immediately demolish that building. What this plan is showing that when we, when we can ultimately demolish it, these parking aisles can be extended to connect to that intermediate driveway and it becomes a much more conventional mm -hmm. parking layout. Um, and then we'd have this area that we could either redevelop to another small building or maybe add additional parking and then all of these buildings as well in phase two would come down for a proposed building. But again, that's, that's years off. Allcoat has a, a lease back provision from when Jamie purchased the land, but this is just showing the board that there, there is kind of a method to our madness and eventually we'll get there when we're able to take down these uh, three buildings that have critical support items in them to all coats business. Um, and then we added uh, two detail sheets for the two underground storm tech systems, uh, the last two sheets of the revised set. So, All right, I think that's good. I think you're good. Um, well, uh, just quickly, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Um, okay. The other couple things is Kleinfelder did review our plans and they issued a letter that says the town water supply is adequate to support the proposed development. Um, the site is a net import for fill, so there's no earth removal permit requirement. I went over the um, stormwater management. And then we did just on this past Friday receive the peer review from Green International on our traffic assessment. 
We forwarded that to TEPP, mm -hmm. our uh, traffic consultant. He's reviewing it now and formulating a response that will get to Valerie um, with plenty of time before the next meeting. Um, so we're, we understand that, you know, we just got these revised plans in a week ago and that it takes time to review and go through the 14 page letter and the 17 pages of plans. And uh, we're hopeful that we've satisfied the comments and that uh, by the next meeting, we should have any out, outstanding issues wrapped up and hopefully moving forward towards an approval. So happy to answer any questions. Board have any questions? I think we're okay. So we'll wait till Paul gives a good uh, review and we get some comments from him. Okay. Um, I, did, um, I did render this this afternoon just so the board has kind of an idea of the, the area of the site that we're working on. Okay. Kind of bring it out. Okay. Dark, the dark Thank green you. trees to remain. This medium green is wetland areas that we're not touching. Our two new stormwater management areas both building and existing building to remain. Okay. Do you, Val, do you want to uh, go to traffic and have... Um... Yeah. Yeah, so um, Wing Wong from Green International is in the meeting tonight to um, to discuss the peer review for traffic. Um, so if you, if the board would like to hear from the peer reviewer, he's um, he's here to present. Wing, you comfortable? You want to uh, have a discussion? Absolutely. Um, I do have a small presentation prepared, but I can go any way you want to. If you want to just dive into questions, however you like. Uh, go with the presentation. Go ahead. That's good. I will try to share my screen, and uh, hopefully everything works out here. Can everyone see? Yes. Yes. Um, yes. So I will, um, I will go. <clears throat> All right, good evening, uh, members of the board. My name is Wing Wong. I'm with Green International Affiliates. Uh, we're the traffic care reviewer for the redevelopment here on 100 Aim Street. As part of our work, uh, we review the traffic assessment memo dated uh, April 13, 2020, as well as the site plans that were dated on uh, February 27, 2020. Uh, we also perform a site visit to uh, measure site distance as part of our work, uh, which we'll get to later. And we completed our, our um, letter last week. And tonight I'll be going over the highlights of our review. I'm, I'm not going to present every comment, um, but we'll focus on more the important ones. So I'll start off with the uh, traffic uh, assessment review. Uh, while we're generally satisfied with the brief nature of the memo, and it's largely due to the small or the expected small increase in traffic uh, as it compares to existing use. Uh, however, we are looking for additional clarifications um, as some of these may affect the number of new trips that might be generated by the redevelopment. Um, so, for example, and I think I hear some clarification uh, tonight, uh, is that the, the use of the building, for example, how much of the percentage is warehouse, how much percentage is office space. Generally, each type of use generates a slightly different number in terms of trips as defined by ITE or industry standards. Um, so in this case, the memo only assume a single land use, which is industrial use. Um, so we'd like to have confirmation on the use of the building and how it relates to the trip generation calculations. Another key clarification we like to have is the size of the proposed building relative to the existing building. Uh, the memo indicated the building size will increase by approximately 16,000 square feet, but we noted that it might be a discrepancy about 22,000 square feet based on the site plans that we review. Uh, and this increase in building size is critical because it has a direct correlation to the number of new trips and also for comparing uh, the existing conditions to determine the net increase in total trips. So we definitely would like to have that clear, uh, clarified. And lastly, we would just would like to have a little, more, a little bit more information regarding the expected truck routes. Um, as you all know, familiar with the location, uh, the geometry at the intersection of Ames Street, at Main Street, as well as at Woburn Street, uh, can make certain truck movements difficult. 
so we would like to point that out. And if um, if the truck route, truck routes are known, then we could have further discussions on this topic if needed. Um, and equally important is also we want to know what type of truck will be assessing the site, and we will talk about this a little bit more uh, in detail as we move on to this, uh, the site plans. And I, I would say the most critical element in our review was the expected site distance at the proposed driveway. Um, so while we're out there, we took a few measurements at roughly the same location where the proposed driveway would be located. Uh, and we have a couple of concerns regarding site distance. Um, first off, the site distance should be measured against what's called the 85th percentile travel speed. It is the speed in which um, most motorists are either traveling at that speed or below that speed. And this is the speed that is used by national guideline in industry practice uh, when it's compared to site distance. Uh, the memo did not collect speed data uh, as part of studies, but for the purpose of our review, we were able to pull some old data about 10 years ago for a project that was located west of the bridge or the railroad. Uh, and using that data, the 85th, 85th percentile speed for AIM streets around 43, 44 miles an hour. Uh, so that's how we uh, measure or uh, against the site distance versus minimum versus uh, what is required. And as you can see, uh, the stopping site distance uh, at the proposed driveway looking west, in this case, looking um, towards the bridge and towards the railroad, the stopping site distance is less than the minimum required. And stopping site distance is generally for vehicles traveling on Ames Street, being able to see an obstruction and then be able to stop safely in time. Oops. Uh, and the second piece of the site distance is intersection site distance, which is measurement for a vehicle sitting at the proposed driveway, looking out onto Ames Street, and then be able to have uh, safe time to uh, pull into the main road. And as you can see, uh, what we measure or what we approximated is just meeting the minimum. Um, however, it's not uh, as simple as that uh, comp simple comparison may seem. Um, if we look at the site plan, the proposed driveway does come up at a relatively steep grade, around seven and a half percent or so approximately uh, from the site onto Aim Street. So that's a relatively steep grade. In addition to that, there are proposed guardrails located along uh, both sides of the driveway. And I'm assuming everybody can see my cursor. Yes. Um, yep. So the combination of the grades on the driveway along with the location of the guardrail, uh, we're concerned that um, they could be obstructing the visibility um, of a driver's height. So uh, the comment that we had in the peer review letters, uh, make sure the applicant demonstrate that uh, these features here do not obstruct the site distance. Uh, as you can see uh, from the table previous that they are relatively tight. Um, next, I'll go into uh, the site plan review. Um, as mentioned earlier, uh, the applicant uh, if they could indicate the type of trucks that will be accessing the uh, loading docks in the back, as well as the ones in the front, uh, that will obviously be very important. Um, and as well as providing truck movement templates to, so that we can um, verify that this, the site layout is gonna be able to accommodate any type of trucks that are coming here. Um, in addition, fire trucks, which I heard earlier tonight, so we'll be able to review that um, going forward. Um, and also potentially a garbage truck in the back that the dumpster is shown um, uh, in the corner of the building, and uh, we just want to make sure that uh, access is possible. Another key element that we commented on was potential truck encroachment on Ames Street. Uh, if a large truck, uh, there are times when a large truck has to encroach onto a Main Street in order to complete a turn. Most of the time that is acceptable because the frequency of these large trucks are low, such that we don't, there's really no um, safety concerns. But as I mentioned earlier, because the stopping site distance on Ames Street is less than the minimum required, if a truck does have to swing out into the opposing lanes of traffic, uh, we just want to verify that, um, uh, that whether or not that is the case and uh, because that could be a safety concern um, down the line. And, you know, take a couple of steps back. If it is determined that um, the site, vis site line visibility is not able to be provided, we strongly recommend uh, perhaps some, some consideration, either revising the grading or potentially even shifting the driveway location 
such that the uh, uh, the adequate sight lines are provided in the future as part of the design. Um, other comments that we noted is that uh, on building number 16, uh, which is shown right here in this corner, it's very close to the 22 foot drive aisle. Uh, we just recommend the applicant take a closer look here for any potential constructability issues right in the corner of that building. Um, believe that's uh, resolvable, but just take a closer look. Um, would also like to identify the uses of the various parking lots. Um, right now, obviously, they're being divided up by an existing building. Um, it looks like, from what I heard tonight, in the future, everything will be together. So this comment may go away. But at the meantime, before we get there, it'd be good to know exactly which, uh, what these parking areas are for, and how this information is presented uh, when the project is constructed. Uh, we also recommend the applicant check the number of required accessible parking spaces. Uh, based on ADA guidelines. Right now, uh, they're missing one. Um, but again, we'll have to look at the new plans to see if that has been changed. Um, and the last comment we have uh, is for the applicant to potentially take a look at this area here, which there are a lot of access points all sort of into one. And, um, and if there's any possibility, maybe shifting the driveway uh, one way or another to reduce the number of conflict points, um, that would certainly be preferred. So with that, I, I open up to any questions that the board may have. Board have any questions? Uh, I wanted to ask quickly about the um, the trucks. So the truck um, uh, turning uh, plan that was provided was um, was for the you know Wilmington's biggest truck, right? So um, I guess I don't know how. Um, you know, he mentioned it's a 10 wheel flatbed. And so I'm picturing um, a truck with potentially, um, if not longer, at least a longer wheelbase and a tougher turn. And I mentioned this at the last meeting that I'm just, I'm concerned about where that driveway is um, coming off of that, off of that bridge. And I know it's, uh, you know, the speed limit there is kind of, you know, artificially low. Um, just because of the visibility, but you know the reality of it is that if um, if there's a ten wheel flatbed with you know a twenty five foot wheelbase and a forklift sticking off the back of it, um, trying to come out of there on a eight percent grade, like I just I just don't feel really good about that. I, I even think that the um, you know the radius of the curve at the at the um, at the intersection is a little a little tight. In fact, um, you know, even even the cab over a fire truck was coming way into the other lane to to uh, make that right turn. And, you know, that's the direction that the trucks are going to go, um, I, I expect. So um, that's that, that, uh, can that's share still, my screen that's again? a problem for me. OK, thank you. Can, would you mind if I shared my screen again, Wing? Yeah, no, absolutely. I think you can just share and I think uh, mine would just go away. No, it says I can't share while you're sharing. Okay. Uh, looks like mine just went away, so um, okay. if you want to give it a shot. So, uh, like I said, we just got um, Green's report on Friday. We sent it off to um, Jim at TEPP to address it. Um, you know, we one of the things that I, I feel kind of obligated to say is that the speed data that he's referencing is on the other side of the bridge where the road's flat and the speed posted speed limits 30. On our side of the bridge, the posted speed limits 25. Um, so designing to something that's basically 20 miles an hour over the posted speed limit is, um, is difficult for us, but we're looking at addressing it. We are looking at increasing these radii to 30 feet from 15 feet to give some more room. The trucks that Garrity will be seeing are uh, just 10 wheel flatbed, no forklift hanging off the back. They'd be coming in the site loaded and they'd be backing into the building here to get unloaded and then they'd be leaving empty. Um, that would be our largest truck. Patrick, I don't think nobody can see your screen, but Terry, I think just to give you maybe a, a, a 30 second overview, no large trucks will be moving to the north end of the site. So the only loading of, of 
flatbed 10 wheel or less dump trucks will be or fl flatbed trucks will be on the south side yep. uh, on those two overhead doors so on the north side of the building we have um like e350 box truck vans that are like 14 feet long like a ups van yeah, yeah. less concerned about those coming out you know i know those are what's coming out loaded um you know i just <clears throat> You know, my, my concern is really is turning out onto Eames with. Um, can I can I ask somewhat of a maybe an indelicate question? I'm basically being asked as a landowner here to design my entrance to a speed limit that's 100 percent in excess of the posted limit at, at the road, based on data that's being generated from another stretch of road half a mile away with a speed limit that's five miles per hour higher. Is there sort of a reasonable factor here where this is really an enforcement issue and and not really a design standard, or am I am I just way off base? I can, uh, I can help answer that. Uh, first of all, uh, I think in our recommendations is to potentially take a speed uh, uh, data at the site itself, um, understanding that with what's going on, traffic volume is lower than usual. However, uh, speed data you can still collect. Um, and at this point, with more traffic kind of sort of coming back on the road, you, you probably would be able to get pretty good data. Um, regarding design standards, it is industry standards as well as national standards to use uh, the 85th percentile, which um, is sort of the operating speed of the row, if you will. And generally, site distance uh, is based on that value and not the posted speed value. Right, but I guess I'm asking, Wing, if I'm taking, I mean, I could take a speed rating from, from I-93, right? And it it's not, if you're taking a, a, a speed calculation from a different stretch of road with a different speed limit, I, I, I'm, I guess I'm a little unclear as to why that's relevant to another stretch of road with a different speed limit on it. Well, this is the closest one that we do have. Uh, unfortunately, the study that was provided to us did not collect any uh, speed data. But as I said, even though traffic volume is lower than your typical conditions, this is something that's relatively easy and quick and very cheap to get. Um, so if your traffic consultant agrees with that, um, maybe that's something that can be done relatively easy as part of the response. And we can see what the 85th percentile would be here. And then we can maybe put this issue to bed. Um, but I think our comment still stands is that to demonstrate that the vehicle sitting at the driveway waiting to exit is not going to be obstructed by the guardrail as well as the grading condition. So regardless of the speed, I think that's something that um, should be demonstrated that it is safe. Um, and and I think. Uh, all right. All right. I, I got it. All right. That's good. I got a couple questions. Okay. One, uh, Jamie, what about your tenant? What kind of trucks do they have? I assume this is a common driveway now, right? Correct. So they've been using, uh, they have, um, you know, 53 foot 18 wheelers. They have five to six deliveries a day. Um, they have been having this sort of ongoing for as long as they've been there. Um, the trucks come in, they, the tractor unhooks and leaves the trailer and then comes back at a later date to pick up the empty trailer. Um, so their trucking is relatively limited, but it is with a larger truck. So, so Wang, that all has to get taken into account, right? Trucks from the tenant, trucks Absolutely. from the new business? Absolutely. Okay. Okay. And Patrick, so why can't the driveway be a little wider uh, and or slide over a little? Can so you the, go over that again? Yeah. It just, just seems little, like if it was, so you know, the driveway slid over. Was, was, yeah, I'm sorry. We're talking over each other. Not intentional. The driveway is 28 feet wide. And, yep. and if we take the 85th percentile speed data from 90 aims, which we're having a hard time digesting, but let's just assume that we do, we're off by uh, 12 feet. So basically this curb line would need to move to there. That's the difference that we're talking about from there to there. The reason we have the driveway set where it is, is this existing curb line that essentially runs front to back and creates you know a, a north south divide here from the the eastern side of the site that we're redeveloping now and the western it was it was seemed logical to us to line this curb line up and come straight down and in if we shift this over 
then the truck's going to be coming downhill and also coming over to meet this existing area because we can't crash into this building. We can't crash into the fire hydrants and post indicator valves and everything that's in these islands. So we'd be coming down and switching over, which is why we're here. And if you take the, the site distances that are in Green International's table, well, they're good for an excess of 35 miles an hour, which is you know 10 miles an hour over the posted speed. Um, so maybe it does come down to taking speed data here if, if ourselves and TEP and, and green become at an impasse. Um, but, you know, like I said, we just got the report on Friday. We just sent it to our, our traffic consultant uh, Monday and he's in the process right. of putting it together. Some of the other things okay. I think in the letter are really easily addressed. I think it just boils down to the driveway. Um, I'm not- Well, I think- right. I, I want to interrupt you a minute. Here. Now, I think what the problem is with with designing this to to try to accommodate these two buildings, but ultimately this is going to be a totally different site. So maybe this first phase needs a little more modification to the site so that it'll address how the site is going to be in the future. So. I guess that's a, my roundabout way of saying, maybe you do have to move those curb lines, or maybe you do have to move the hydrant. Uh, it's, it's really maybe you do have to do a little more work along there to accommodate. It's it's more building twelve than anything. You know, if even if we move over at all, we're going to be coming right into building twelve. So, can I ask a dumb question, Mr. Chairman? Um, obviously, if, first of all. Alco has a 10 year lease back with me. So nothing's going to happen for 10 years if anything does happen. Um, okay. And at that time, I'm looking at obviously a fairly substantial redevelopment of the balance of the site, at which point, honestly, I may want to move the driveway for other reasons. And I assume that would be for discussion on site plan approval for a, for a phase two, 10 years, 10 years hence. And I'm not trying to be difficult. Yeah. I'm just trying to get this solved, re, you know, relatively painlessly for all of us. Um, you know. Okay. Anybody else get anything? Okay. I assume we don't have anybody in the audience there, Val? Uh, we do not have any raised hands for any comments. So we want to go July 7th at what? About 740, 745. You, 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 Valleyville Street's going to get five minutes. Is that what you're telling me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think there's a, a likelihood that one of those two first ones may, um, may be really quick. So, okay. Patrick, do you have enough time? You're going to get anything from your traffic person? Yeah, so we, uh, Jamie? yeah, we actually worked the last 24 hours and drafted our response. So it's a couple day, it's a couple, a day or two away from fine tuning and getting it submitted so that there's plenty of time for Green International and us to work through an item. Okay. When are you going to mark your calendar? What's the day again? I'm sorry, I missed it. July 7th. I'll be available. Okay. Okay, so I'll take a motion to continue the public hearing to July 7th at 745. So moved. One second. Okay. Okay. Uh, Angela, how you feel? Vote. Yes. Sean? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Terry? Yes. Randy? Chairman votes yes. All right, we'll see you then. Thank all you. Right, thank you all very much. Thank you. <clears throat> so, what do we got next? Do you want to do the Board of Appeals? Sure. 
right, let me just um announce. Larry, you here? Okay, so you're up. <laughs> All right. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, the first case, 7 20 for 44 uh, Fair Meadow Road. They're looking for a special permit to extend a non conforming structure. Um, they want to add a 30 by 38 addition. It's, it's in R20 and it's also a corner lot. Um, the existing house has front setbacks of 19.2 and 30.2 feet um, where 40 is required. And the side and rear setbacks are uh, 11.5 and 18.1 where 20 is required. Um, the addition has a front setback of 27.2 feet where 40 is required, um, but it does meet the side and rear setback requirements. In the original memo that went out, um, we said that you know the septic system location uh, being relocated was not on the plan, but since then they did um, send us a septic plan, which is included in your in your packet in case you haven't seen it yet. Sean, what do you think? I mean, I didn't see the I didn't see the new one that had the septic, so I'm I'm going to look at that too. Oh, very good, Val. It's quite the addition there. It's pretty big. It is. <laughs> Nichols Fairview. I don't know if Fair Meadow is in So, uh, Fair Meadow. So, they meet the setbacks now, but with the addition, they will not? Is that what we just said? No, they do not meet the setbacks right now. Um, I don't think they meet any of the setbacks, actually. Sorry, I, I lost my notes being in full screen right. here. <laughs> All right, so so why? I mean, that's a 36 by 30. What, that's bigger than the original house, isn't it? Um, yeah, 30, 30 by 38, and it, it probably is about the same size uh, foundation-wise as the existing house. Um, let me see. Okay, so I guess the the addition, though the front setback does not meet the 40 foot requirement, um, it is uh, farther away, I guess, than the existing house. Um, but they they neither of them meet that front setback. The, the problem is they're a 12,000 square foot lot in an R20. Right. What it all is. Yeah, but we're increasing its its okay. non-compliance by a hundred percent, right? Right. I mean, so it's, it's bigger than the original. So, like, correct me, Val, if I'm wrong. I mean, in the old days of the board, you know, you weren't supposed to go beyond fifty percent. So, does that still apply, or did I make that up? It's not a it's not a rule, I don't think, but um, you know, it's not a it's nothing that's in the bylaw, but it is a a metric that you can certainly use as a standard um, in practice. Well, I mean, it was one since Randy and I have been on the board. That was the standard we always use. So, been using it since I've been. That's, that's a long time. So, so it just seems to me that this is uh, quite a bit. Yeah, I mean, the only plus side about it is that at least it's not um, blocking the corner more than the existing as far as, you know, being a corner lot. But um, yeah, yeah, it's 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 doubling the the nonconformity. I mean, and that's just because it's on the problem, other side, right? Yeah, the problem right. with this plan is we don't know how it affects any of the other properties, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Fair Meadow is a street, right? It's not an... Ex not a uh, unaccepted way or anything, right? Uh, it is. I think it's a, a public way. Maybe I can um, pull up. I think, uh, yeah, but I mean, it's signed and it, it's. It's an actual street. Street, yeah. And I didn't see exactly what they're proposing to put in that new area. It's does it show or do they talk about that? 
Uh, you mean like house plans? Yeah. Yes. Uh, let me double check. I think that we Is that right have house plans that added as well. Um, I, don't think they have, I don't think they have interior. They have, um, yeah. they have exterior plans. Or exterior. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And a basement, like a foundation plan. Yeah. All right. I see that. So is this like a, just a whole nother house? I mean, in law, yeah. It's a, it, I mean, it looks like it's a garage and. Uh, so this is. It looks like one big window above it. So. This is the existing, if you can see my screen, um, the existing right here. Um, so they've got neighbors behind, neighbors to the side. So their new um, addition would be right here, their septic right here. Is it more detrimental? We have a retaining wall in that septic tank. They can't tell. Yeah, I was looking. Curve is connection pole. One hundred eighty nine ninety four. It's kind of hard to tell. I think it's pretty flat. Like you know, I was trying to check on that. I don't. I don't think it's more than like a foot. Okay. That one hundred point eighty nine is the uh, the length of that um, pipe. Yeah. Oh. What is that? That's the. The length that's of the. the yeah. Oh, okay. So what's there now? They're knocking down a shed or oh, an existing garage to be razzed, so. Yeah. Looks like a detached garage. Yeah, it's, it's just a little one car. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm not in favor. It just seems too big to me, but it's pretty big. Um, it wouldn't be the biggest thing around. I'm looking at the I'm looking at it right now. Are you looking on Street View? Yeah, it would be. What, other, what do the other houses look like? They look like that house. There's a split next door. I think a split entry next. Yeah, split entry next door. Um. A ranch that's been added on to across the street. So this is the house here. We're not seeing your screen, Valerie. What's that? Yeah, we're not seeing it. Oh, we're not? Okay. No. Yeah, I might have to dump it before you. Now? No. There you go. Okay. Well, that's, that's it. What's there now? That's that's what's there now. Um, looks fake. Across the street, looks fake. Um, down the street, got this next door. Across the street. No, it doesn't look so bad in that picture, I guess. So you got the whole yeah. Yeah, septic, septic would go over here. Right in the front. Yeah, along this side. And then this would be all new dwelling. Yeah. How does everybody feel? Don't all talk at once. They could, <laughs> they could certainly make it narrower without losing two cars worth of garage. You put it that way, you know? I mean, they could, they could definitely do that. 
It's twenty. It's twenty eight feet. I mean, they could knock four feet off of it without having too much of a problem. Parking. Yeah. I mean, that's. I guess we should say they should try to maximize these setbacks and and um, make sure it blends in with the neighborhood. I concur. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think we ought to say we recommend to the Board of Appeals we like on these additions not to go um, beyond the fifty percent more. It's non-compliant. That's our feeling. They can do what they do. So, uh, that, you okay, Sierra? You mean increasing, okay? you mean increasing yeah. nonconformity by more than fifty percent? Is that what you think? Like, yeah, yeah. Increasing the nonconforming structure by not more than fifty percent. Yeah. So, like, if the if, if the house is two thousand square feet, they should only add on another thousand. The house is three thousand, and they can only go fifteen hundred. Right. What we don't want them to do is the house is two thousand, and they add two thousand. Say, well, we only fifty percent. That's not what the intent is. Okay. So if whatever the existing square footage is, and they be our recommendation, they don't increase the nonconformity by fifty percent. At least that's the way I feel. I think it's a good rule to live by. How many houses around? So it's in our 20s zone. I don't know. How many, can you tell, Val, how many houses around in that area are all our 20s? I mean, it, you know, the starting, you know, with only 15,000 square feet when they need 20. So. Yeah, you, there's, it looks like there's kind of an assortment of lot sizes. Some are larger, some are small. Um, it's kind of a mix. Definitely, definitely looks like an R10 that is zoned R20. A couple of larger houses on uh, that Cherry Road. Mm. Larger houses, larger lots on uh, that Cherry Road. Yeah. Yeah, the ones that back up to the Shawshank River are a little bit larger, um, but the interior lots are pretty small. Yeah, I mean, if the, the area is tight, it's and the houses aren't large. All right. You good? Yeah, we're good. I'm good. All right. What's next? Right. Uh, let's see. Next is 53 North Street. Um, they're also doing a special permit to extend an unconforming structure. Um, they want to put a 19 by 20 addition um, which is a garage with a room above it, and um, it's in R20. The existing house meets all the setback requirements except for one side, uh, which is 19.5, where 20 feet is required. Mm-hmm. Um, the addition meets front and rear setback requirements, but has a side setback of 10.9, where 20 feet is required. So, so, so I didn't love this one because they they're not conforming on on one side and they're creating a non-conformity on the other. Yeah. Yeah, well, at least at least the non-conformity is maybe from a little bit of a build out there. It's only half foot, so yeah. it's not the end of the world. The no, existing how you measure it, I guess. The existing one, yeah. Yeah, the existing Nonconformity is just that that one side that's off by a half a foot at, at its closest point to the lot line, um, but it's the, the new one that really has a, a much more decreased uh, side setback that doesn't meet it. Again, another odd shaped lot. I mean, I'm not I'm I, I'm not sure it's, it's a good idea to recommend that they introduce a new nonconformity, you know? I mean, that's kind of tough. Yeah. I guess the question would be, why can't they go up towards the deck, I guess? I don't know. Well, they're trying to build a garage. Oh, they want a garage. They're trying to build a garage. Oh, I got you.
Maybe they can do one car instead of two. It is one. I, 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 I think it is. I looked yeah, at it earlier. It is one. I thought they could, um, they could, they got some space in that front setback. They could actually really decrease what they're proposing and still get a car in there. But it'd be tough. I mean, yeah, it'd be tough. Again, it's hard from these plans really to judge what's, you know, how far away is the other house. Right. That was to, I was kind of thinking too. Oh, I can um, I can pull up the um the GIS. Give me a second. Looks like right now they actually have a shed. Um very close to the lot line, which they're going to take down when they, um, if they put up to this garage. And there's a fence, at least according to Google, but this was 2013, so who knows if that's still there. I would assume the above ground pool doesn't meet the setback, right? <laughs> so number 53 is right here. If you can see my screen. The other house is close too. Yeah, so I assume where the driveway is is where they want to put the addition. Yeah. Right in there. Oh, that way. Okay. This way, right here. Oh, so there's hmm. some room between them and the next house, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah, it looks like um doesn't look like um there are a lot of garages in this area. Right. Uh, I I think we I think we gotta kinda be consistent here about the uh in, you know, increase in the non conformities, you know. And then let the Board of Appeals decide. Yeah, I mean that's pretty <clears throat> that that is relatively close. So would it be that the board wouldn't recommend creating a new nonconformity? That's how I feel. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I want to go to the next one. It's uh, it's it's Princeton. I didn't know if you want to. Yeah. So. Um, Princeton um, Properties is proposing a 40B development at Jefferson Road in Middlesex. Um, the materials were in the Dropbox for you to review. Um, they're going through the ZBA uh, for a comprehensive permit. And um, as part of that review, um, they're being peer reviewed for traffic. Um, the civil and stormwater is being peer reviewed. Um, water and sewer are being peer reviewed. They're proposing a sewer extension from Salem Street down to the site with a um, pump station. Um, we are um, having them design that so that um, all the homes that are in the sewer district along that stretch could um, tie into that. Um, so there's, there's really a lot of information there. There's 108 units proposed, 20% um, will be affordable at 50% AMI, um, rental units, um, two buildings, one in the front up on Middlesex Ave and one in the back, kind of where that um, parking lot is that they park trucks in behind the office building across the, um, the little bridge there. Um, so there's a lot of materials in there for your review. Um, what I thought I could do is um, as the peer review letters, the comments are um, submitted to the ZBA is pass those along to you guys um, as well. Um, you don't have to make a recommendation on this tonight. Um, you can kind of wait to see where um, things shake out. Um, we can give you an update at the next meeting um, and cover it then. Um, and you can let me know how much information you want on the project. Um, do you want sort of the applicant to present? I'm sure that they would be able to do that. Um, it's up to you. 
ask a question on this, on this uh, project? Say that again. So I, I was just, I wanted to ask a question on this project. Um, what is, uh, what's the planning board's responsibility on, on this um, type of a, type of a project? They, they're, go, they're going to ZBA first, is that? No, we don't have any say. Yeah, we'll look it, at it just like, just like uh, the one we just did in the guy's garage, right? That's really, yeah, I don't know. And, and then they're going to come through us and do stormwater and, and that sort of thing? Or? Nope. No, nope. no. So everything is um, everything is included in the ZBA approval, um, even the subdivision of land, um, the stormwater, all of it. Um, so really, you would be looking at all of that information and making a recommendation to the ZBA. Um, the Conservation Commission reviews it for the wetlands. Um, that's the only other permit um, that they get. So it's all through the ZBA. I'm looking for a recommendation from this board. Um, but like I said, the, the plans are still being reviewed. Um, there will be plan changes. Um, so I think it's early to give a recommendation um, on the technical aspects and I can um, forward any comments to you guys to keep you in the loop on, um, on the progression of the project. Yeah, I don't know. We'll have to think about whether or not we want them to make a presentation to us. I don't know. Yeah, it could. It could. Yeah, it could be awkward. Um, I I can do that um, if you want. Um, kind of go over the the plans and I think really what's going to be helpful is you guys seeing the comments um, from the peer reviewers and from staff um, to get an idea of what the what the issues are. Um, they are proposing four story buildings. Um, which is one of the um, one of the the points of discussion at the last ZBA hearing, um, and um, you know, so it's going to be it it'll be less than fifty five feet, but it'll be four stories with a half story of parking. Um, they're going to do a level of underground parking, half underground. They're really constrained by the um, the riverfront area from Lover, Lovers Brook. Um, and the wetlands, um, so it's a tight site. Um, what else can I tell you? Um, but there will be, I, you know, I t anticipate that there's gonna be plan changes um, with the comments that are being written up by the peer reviewers, traffic, um, Green International is doing the peer review for traffic. Um, BSC group is doing the um, civil uh, site design and stormwater and wetlands. Um, and then Kleinfelder um, is doing the water and um, Arcadis is doing the sewer um, as usual. Okay. All right. So we'll um, put that off. We'll put that on the agenda for next time. Okay. All right, um, we're ready to go on to the next one. Oh, wait a, minute, wait a minute, before you go on. One one thing, out of all the review on the Princeton thing, I want Rondi to review it architecturally, if she doesn't mind, if she can hear me. Because civil-wise and all that other part, I mean, we we don't really have any say, but she's, she's the... Uh, expert on that and she's very good at it so i would respect her opinion greatly and i and think the board of appeals should too and rondi there was a discussion um at the last zba about um one of the members said you know the height really needs to get pushed down um but you know then there were others who thought that really there really should be a pitched roof um that does bring the height up but it also is an architectural feature that um, most people want to see. So there was that sort of discussion about whether you lower the height by kind of making the roof a little bit squatter um, or you keep the slope, um, which makes the building taller, but has a different look. So I think they, that your input would be greatly appreciated. I can see a waving now. So. <laughs> Yeah, she's nodding her head, yes. 
frozen on my screen. All right, <laughs> All right we can move on. Hopefully, um, we're going it together. Good. All right. Uh, we got 407 Chestnut Street. This is another extending non conforming structure. Um, it's a 20 by 25 foot addition and a 4 by 10 front entry on an existing house. Um, it's in R60. And the existing house meets all the zoning requirements except one side, um, where it's 12.5 feet at its closest point to the lot line and 16.9 feet from the farthest point. Um, 25 feet is required there for that side setback. Um, the proposed addition is on the rear of the house and um, both that addition and the front entry do meet all setback requirements. So I mean, they wouldn't be creating or extend really making the nonconformity worse, I suppose, but um, what they're proposing does not, uh, it, it does meet all the setbacks. All right. I don't have a problem with this one. This one looks good. Okay. All right, and let's see here, lastly, we have uh, five Bailey Road they are looking for a variance. Um, it's in R20 and they want to install a 15 by 30 foot oval above ground pool. Um, it would meet setback requirements except for one of the sides. Um, it would be 10 feet where 20 feet is required. And um, in case it matters for context that that edge of the lot line is where it abuts um, a parcel of town owned undeveloped land. Um, but they are proposing half of the required setback. you say that again? My computer uh, IT is trying to upgrade my computer while I'm on this, so go ahead. You want me to go through the, the whole thing again, or you just miss the end, or go through it again? Yeah, go through, the whole, okay. go through that again, yeah. All right, um, so they're looking for a variance. They're in yep. R20. Um, they want to put yep. in that pool, and it, it won't meet the yep. side setback. Okay, so. Yeah. So 10 feet where 20 is required is what they're proposing. And, and um, that but, lot right next to it that's owned by the town is, right, as of right now, an undeveloped, just undeveloped town owned land. Is it a buildable lot? Do you know? Do you, do you know, Val? We haven't researched it to see if it's buildable or not. Um, so I don't know. It's, um, I don't believe it's conservation land. So it, you know, it, it could be, um, it, there's potential that it could be developed. We just haven't. We haven't done any title work or anything to, to see. Yeah, but you don't know. Is it twenty? Is it would it meet twenty thousand or ten thousand? What what is it? Do you know how big a lot is? It, it doesn't. I think I I looked at it earlier. It was like eight thousand or something. But even if it doesn't, it could you know affordable housing or something. Potentially. Could be affordable housing or something down the road. Could be. Uh, pool is not an essential part of life here. Mm -hmm. So. Again, I think we need to be consistent with what we said earlier. So I think it just increases nonconformity, right? It's um, it's not creating it's not nonconforming, right. it, but it is creating a, a nonconformity where it didn't exist before. Right. The typical response right. variance one though is that there's no actual hardship right. demonstrated. That's our right. usual response. Okay. It's not a special permit. This is a variant. Right. So leave it up to Board of Appeals. So huh? so the comment is no there was no hardship demonstrated? Correct. Yeah. And that's it for ZBA. 
So, Val, getting back to the Farm A, so is that something that's going to be signed electronically? No, that's something that um, once those votes that you guys took um, about electronic signatures and um, Mike, you signing for the board, once those are recorded, which I'm waiting for um, any minute now, um, you will be able to sign a and r plans and subdivision plans um, for the board so you will sign that um, once we get that vote recorded um, same as endorsing um, other plans um, such as the one that's next on the agenda for 228 andover street so i'll come by town hall text you you'll come out put a six foot table between us and Sounds, i'll sign them that's right with my mask on. Yes, and I will have my mask Got on. Got it. Oh, you could leave them in the nice conference room that you have, and I can go in there all by myself and sign it, right? We'll figure something out. <laughs> okay. What else we got? Anything else? So, um, like I said, there's um, plans for 228 Andover Street, um, that are ready for endorsement. Uh, we would just need a, a vote of the board. And then um, once we're set up for, for Mike to sign, we'll get those signed and back to the applicant. Um, there were no, um, Sierra, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think there were any changes to the plan. It was just to supply them for endorsement. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They just had to submit a couple of other things that that weren't plan changes and they've they've done that so you'll give me a buzz and tell me when to come by and i'll sign everything yep do we need to vote on something tonight yeah you usually you vote to endorse the plans and you recommend that they're good yes Okay, I'll take a motion to endorse the plans as submitted. How do you vote there, Terry? So moved. Oh yeah, so moved. Who seconds? I'll, I'll second. All right. Angela, how do you vote? Yes. Sean? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Terry? Yes. Let me read my chat here. Uh, let's see. What do you got there, Randy? Write it in. Chairman's in favor. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. She said yes. She wrote it in the chat. So. Board of Appeals, all the business request to endorse. Request to extend approval. Yes, that's the um, the one last thing on the agenda. Um, I believe um, Michael Field is on um, to um, to make the request of the board. This is for 66 industrial um, that was approved uh -oh. several years ago. Um, and there's an issue with the um, with the utility easement. I yeah, haven't resolved it yet. Good good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman. May I speak? Or? Oh yeah, good. We, oh, I'm we, sorry. That's what you were on. Well, as as Ms., by the way, Miss Gingrich and Miss uh, Licciardi have been extremely uh, cooperative and uh, informative in helping me along here. Um, I appear before, before you on uh, at the end of this, uh, I'm sorry, at the beginning of December. And at that time, the approval was probably uh, over two years old then, maybe two and a half years old. If you recall, a condition of the approval with respect to the improvements in this easement area are that Mr. Canavos, uh, a butter behind us, acknowledged the work as contemplated by the site plan approval notwithstanding the fact that for two years i have negotiated with his lawyer mr sutton 
I think today in preparation for some for this meeting tonight, I counted approximately 50 emails with all kinds of attachments going back and forth, trying to come to some easement agreement with him. And ultimately he's just stonewalled us and has not agreed. Um, the order says that I must get, or that he is supposed to give his acknowledgement. He clearly, he's, he's been to every meeting that I've appeared before you. I believe this is, would be the third or the fourth one. I'm not sure he's here tonight, but he clearly knows and his lawyer clearly knows what is contemplated by the order. What I should also indicate to you is that even, what, what, I'm, what, I'm, what I will ask for, what I'm asking for tonight is to put on the agenda for the next meeting uh, a request that we eliminate that the his acknowledgement be eliminated nothing else only the fact the condition that he acknowledge what is in the order let me point out something else i wish this would be the end of the beginning it's only the beginning of the beginning because even if the board does eliminate that condition uh, my client Eagle electric can't just go in there and start work pursuant to your order because we will be changing a recorded easement. I can't do that without a court order and ultimately I'm gonna to have to go to the land court and get permission. But before I get permission from the land court, I wanna take this order and make sure we are in compliance with it. And we're not in compliance with it until he either issues an acknowledgement, which he is not gonna do or until the board agrees to eliminate that. Um, so that's essentially why I'm here tonight to, to, to ask that it be put on the uh, agenda. So, so, go ahead, Bill. So, Mr. Chairman, the, um, the request is to extend their approval for two months so that um, their approval is still good when you um, consider the, the change. Um, they have filed um, a site plan review application to um, amend that decision that was issued um, those years ago. Um, this tonight is just to extend the approval so that it's still good when you're considering that. Ms. Kingrick, I, I, and I don't mean to be telling you guys uh, uh, any, any of the rules, the COVID rules, which apply to planning boards, but my understanding is uh, in accordance with the uh, governor's executive order, that any approval was in effect as of March 10th shall not expire during the state of emergency. So I think three months of the six month approval was probably used up by March 10th, but then it freezes until the state of emergency is over. I'm coming before you to be very respectful of you guys because you've been very kind to me so far. Um, but I don't think, as a matter of uh, in a technical sense, that the, that the order has, it will expire uh, until three months after the state of emergency is over. Ms. Gingrich, you probably know more about this than I do, but that was my reading of the governor's executive order. Okay, so we don't have, the board doesn't have to extend that approval tonight if you rather not. No, no, only, only if you agree with me as to the effect of the executive order. I don't want to um, muck up the record any more than, than is, you know, uh, it is absolutely required. Well, I, I, I think just to be safe, we ought to probably go the two months. Because I think what we'll probably do is, is we'll probably need some input from town council. And then we'll probably talk about it the next meeting. And I think. You know, we understand where you're coming from. We want to help you out here. We, but you know, I, at the next meeting, I will submit an affidavit which will demonstrate what it's going to be. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Uh, and thank you, Ms. Gingrich. So, okay, so 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 why don't we do this then? Why don't we extend it for two months? That way, we protect everybody involved and we don't have a problem. All right, so I'll take a motion to extend the action deadline. Is that what we're doing, Val? The action deadline? You're extending the um, the site plan approval. Site plan, well, sorry. Right. So we'll take a motion to extend the site plan approval to, what do you want to say? When's it supposed to expire? Well, it expires now on June 6th, Mr. 
June 6th. So, so we'll extend it to uh, August 30th. How's August that? 6th. Mm, but what if we need to meet on August 6th? Um, well, all right, we're going to do it in July then. All right, we'll extend it to August 6th. I'll take a motion. So move. Second, Sean. Second, Sean. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. All in favor? Um, Terry? Yes. Angela? Yes. Sean? Yes, Mr. Chairman. All right. Rondi, Mr. type something in. <laughs> may I, may I, Chairman votes yes. What's well, this on the agenda then for ju in July? July meeting? The issue of a limit. Is yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so you you submitted the site plan review application. Um, yeah. I think that's being or has been um, reviewed for completeness. Um, Sierra, jump in if I'm wrong, but I think we reviewed that. And um, and that will be placed on the um, July agenda. Thank you very much, Ms. Peters. I appreciate you guys. I appreciate it very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay. We're good. Yeah, you're good. Okay. Well, else? anything else? Uh, just a reminder that next week, um, next Tuesday is the joint public hearing with the finance committee. Uh, I'll be okay. sending, I'll be sending out an email um, in the next couple of days with the um, the details, the agenda, the the Zoom invite. So, right. so I have to go into the high school. Yeah, so because the last um, the last time it was continued to the auditorium, the high school auditorium at seven o'clock, you and John Doherty are going to go to the high school, open the meeting, and continue it to online at seven thirty. So, <laughs> so um. So then I got to rush home, get on, then we'll do a Zoom. Yeah. So so the thing is, he, he sent me an invite. To a meeting, I and I I kept accepting it, but it wasn't working. So I so I just wanted to make sure that's what we're doing. That's what we're right. doing, and I'll I'll um I'll talk so to you seven o'clock to the high school and, and right. drive drive home. Get online by seven thirty. Okay. <laughs> I think you have a police escort as well. <laughs> yeah, that's a good yeah. idea. That's yeah. Cool. Okay. All right, that's it. I think. All right. So, so, so one more thing though. What are we doing about town meeting? What's the latest? Is that true? We're going to meet at the park or something? What? What? what mm -hmm. Stadium. The stadium um, with tents um, or a tent. Um, that's the idea at this point. June twenty seventh at the high school outside in the stadium. I. I think more details to come. In a tent. <laughs> so if we're in a tent, what's the difference about being in the auditorium? The Open sun. air. Open yeah. air. <laughs> I, will, I, I think there will be uh, um, protocols in place, so we'll just have to um, to wait to see what those are and. Um, Same. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Meetings adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night.